Hi, uh, Cult of the Amateur, uh, Q in here. I hope you're good. Um, I've been enjoying your videos for uh, a month or two, and uh, yeah, I like your work. Um, yeah, so uh, I thought I'd reply to your video, uh, your recent video on YouTube, which was called um, "What the What Egypt Tells Us." I think I've got the title right. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed your video. I thought it was very interesting, and uh, it was certainly not uh, the standard sort of view of these things. But um, I have to be honest. I, I'm a complete sort of amateur in this, and I don't. Uh, I'm not an expert in this or anything else. Um, but uh, I have to say, I just didn't really sort of recognise your analysis of the things going on in Egypt. Um, and uh, I thought I'd sort of try and sort of criticize a little bit what you were saying or question question it. Um, your main point seems to be to divide um, the two forces in Egypt and, and across the world um, into two groups which you describe as um, <coughs> globalists and uh, neo-traditionalists. Um, now it seems to me that the globalists you're talking about are basically capitalists uh, or the, the free market, the free marketists uh, so it seems to me less confusing to just call them capitalists or the free mar free marketists I suppose that's not a phrase people use but that's the, that's the one I'd use uh, the best um, and uh, the neo-traditionalists that you're talking about, uh, it seems to me, are kind of anybody who opposes capitalism at this time, um, or anybody who's opposes capitalism and is a reasonable sort of reasonably powerful force that might end up sort of running a country or in influencing a a country. Uh, so they're a little bit of a mixed bag of people and I think unless you unless you just call them the anti um, anti free market forces uh, then I think it's slightly confusing to to lump them together as one force so at the end of your video you're you're really saying um, that uh, you you hope that the, the, the two forces you've talked about end up in some sort of balance um, so to use the kind of terminology I just used, what you what you're really saying is that you hope um, the free market doesn't just destroy all everything else, or and but you also hope that the free market doesn't disappear entirely and be entirely destroyed by other things. Um, that's a reasonable view. I don't really share it. I'm a bit more of an anti-capitalist than you. I see with the environment and inequality and stuff that uh, cap I just rather capitalism be reduced um that does obviously depend on what the alternative is um the usual thing uh providing an alternative to capitalism tends to be state uh control and uh i generally see this as a better a better way to do things than than capitalism because it tends to have some democratic uh control involved and um, I'm not so worried about efficiency given that uh, given that uh, all the environmental problems and s problems for the rich and poor and all that um, I generally see uh, a kind of uh, yeah the state tends to re redistribute from what I've seen so um, I'm a bit more of an anti-capitalist than you but um, anyway so that's a uh, that's your analysis kind of uh, analyzed. Um, when I look at uh, the, the Egypt situation, I just really see it in terms of two different forces. Uh, basically, on the one hand, we have democracy, and on the other hand, we have uh, dictatorship. Uh, or you could lay it out as a whole kind of spectrum. On one end, you've got a society where Everybody is equally sort of in control of what of what happens. You have kind of direct democracy. You don't even have politicians. Say, um, I happen to support a form of direct democracy, uh, which is uh, usually known as sortition. Uh, basically, people being randomly drawn up to uh, decide each law. Um, 
And uh, on the other hand, we have uh, on the other side of the spectrum, we've got the power concentrated in the hands of of one person arbitrarily, and uh, that's that's what seems to, what seems to be happening in uh, in Egypt. Uh, has has happened in our country a few hundred years ago, and in many other countries, is there's a kind of um, it's at a kind of tipping point where this system where one person's in charge is being swept away by a more democratic thing so that's that's what seems to be going on there and uh, my conclusion and I would imagine your conclusion to that uh, what we want to see from those two forces is basically we want to see uh, the democratic force prevailing uh, but also we want it to all happen as peacefully as possible um, and uh, well last uh, sort of little end note um, of my little analysis of, of the the Arab Spring is that uh, I think the reason uh, this is just a guess but I think the reason it's kind of happening now and the reason why we've had Occupy Wall Street and so on at the same time is because uh, the oil prices have gone up and food prices went up and I think that it's just kind of pushed people on, over over the brink and uh, that's the kind of reason it's got violent and messy now, I think, because people are experiencing hardship. I could be completely wrong about that. Um, anyway, I uh, hope you like my response. Uh, all the best.